Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Field. Today we're going to do part two of Green Glue Nonsense. Part one, we established that it was adhesive only. I know everybody thinks it has magical powers. I know there's technical data published on their website, but it's really a joke. The numbers are so small, they're inconsequential. And there's no magical barrier powers to this stuff. It's an adhesive, okay? It's one methodology, it's one tactic in a total sound strategy that must be obeyed, okay? All strategies are different. All strategies are frequency and amplitude dependent. There is no one size that fits all. To attribute some magical power to an adhesive is simply nonsense. That's as bad as putting stuff in the corners of your room and saying, oh, well, there's my low frequency management taken care of. Really? Because by definition, unwanted sound pressure between two parallel surfaces is an axial mode, not two parallel corners. So this is another perversion by the industry to sell things that don't work, to put things in places that are easy for you to say yes to because you don't have something there. But just like in axial modal distribution in a room, if two parallel walls are causing the problem, treating two parallel corners will not do anything to solve the whole wall problem. You can't put band-aids on acoustical arterial cuts. And this is what a lot of manufacturers want you to do. And we won't have any part of it because it's nonsense. Okay? Let's take an example to illustrate this. Here's a common thing you hear about all the time. My God, I'm so sick of reading about this literature and we never even use it. In over 246 room builds, I've never used it because it's not cost effective. It's not frequency and amplitude dependent in the areas that we work in. And it's a waste of space. Here's the double wall. You've heard this, the argument, the two, two by four walls. I'm going to even give you two five-eighths inch thick pieces of drywall. Yep, put your green glue in there. Put any kind of adhesive in there. I don't care. So now you got ten and a half inches. We'll give you a one inch airspace between them. What do you get for all that? What do you get for ten and a half inches? An STC of 66. Big deal. It only works above this frequencies, because I've tested many of these combinations. So will it, will it isolate? Will it be a barrier? Sure. You're giving up 10 and a half inches of space to only achieve attenuation above 125 cycles. Will it work in a home theater? Nope. Will it work in a control room? Nope. Will it work in a drum room? Nope. And a guy the other day used exactly that process in his home theater called me up and he said, Dennis, my wife's complaining about the bass transmitting into the kitchen. And he told me that's what he used. Point proven, okay? So this is another thing in the literature that you people have been bombarded with and you just take for granted and that's foolish in acoustics. For everything you can find in acoustics, I'll find you the opposite answer. And always remember the truth is somewhere in the middle. So let's look at our design, same 10 and a half inches of space, completely different design, completely different design, not double wall, not wasted airspace, same 10 and a half inches of space. I think we're even a half inch less and we're looking at an STC of 90. There's your 66 and ours will start at 40 Hertz and go up. I'm working on one that go down to 30 cycles but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it in 10 and a half. We're going to need some more space. But this just gives you an idea of the madness of all this. To give up 10 and a half inches of space to get something that works above 125 cycles? Ludicrous. Nonsense. Waste of time, waste of money. So first things first with noise. You got to develop a strategy. You develop the strategy by measuring, quantifying, qualifying the amount of noise. You have to do that over seven days. So you can know the minimum and maximum pressure levels during the day and during the night. Here's a common problem I see. 
Mix engineers buy a house. They convert their garage into a mixing room. During the day when they're working, no problem. Neighbors aren't complaining and they're mixing at maybe 90, 95 dB SPL. Here's the problem. At night at two in the morning when they're still working, and a lot of you guys do, you know what I'm talking about, the police are at the front door because the ambient levels in the neighborhood have dropped so low and they haven't dropped their pressure levels. So the big difference between the pressure levels outside and the levels in their studio are annoying to neighbors and you get the phone call. The next step is you're going to be violated for violating city code ordinances. The next step is you'll be sued and the next step you'll be thrown out. So you got to have a strategy when it comes to noise. Don't grab for the first thing people tell you works because there is absolutely with noise no one size fits all. Every situation is different. You must measure, measure, measure. You must measure each day the minimum and the maximum pressure levels. You must uh, measure each day the minimum and maximum pressure levels you're going to produce in the room, the minimum and maximum pressure levels outside. Those two are related. Ambient levels and internal pressure levels are related. There's correlations. Correlations that require strategy. Glue is just one very, very small part. In fact, I can build walls with no glue and they'll attenuate perfectly. So do your own thinking here, people. You're giving up a lot of space with a 40, 50 year old method and science and technologies improve drastically. Just look at our graphic where we get an STC of 90. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.